episode 31 of the interpretation station is called to order. What the hell? Who's this dapper looking gentleman that's usurping the role of interpretation station, station master? Fear not, ladies and gentlemen. I want to introduce you to one of the station's new partners in crime. He's going to be making a, or he's going to be guest hosting today's episode. I'm hoping to persuade him in future to, to host many more. Um, his name is Mr. Daniel Harrison. Uh, he is an interpreter with uh, many years of experience um, working for the top international organizations, both freelance and permanent. Uh, including at the United Nations. Uh, Dan is actually a double A, English and French. Um, but today, he's, we're just going to be working, our episode today is just going to be a French to, to English episode. Uh, Dan has a bit of a slightly rather different style to me, you'll see. Um, for a start, he's much more professionally dressed and kitted out. Um, but uh, yeah, you're going to learn a lot from him. Uh, Dan is also going to include in the description box um, underneath the video, you'll be able to find lot, many of his notes with lots of useful uh, vocabulary solutions for some of the things that he's going to be talking about today. Just bear with him for the first couple of minutes. He's a bit nervous, a bit camera shy initially, and then he gets into the flow of things. So you're going to learn a lot from Dan and I may have to, if Dan becomes a regular on the interpretation station, I may have to give him his own segment, which would, of course, have to be called Wham Bam Dan. But we'll see about that. We'll see about that. Uh, in the meantime, while I leave you in Dan's uh, capable, very capable hands, uh, I am going to have a beer, put my feet up, and go and watch The Crown. So, all the best. Hello there, subscribers of the Interpretation Station. My name is Daniel Harrison, and I'm a colleague of Roland Palaretz, who has asked me to uh, host today's show. He asked me a long time ago, in fact, uh, but it's taken me ages to get round to reviewing uh, the performance of uh, some, a colleague of ours who um, interpreted or practiced interpreting Algeria speaking at uh, the 30th anniversary of the uh, Convention on the Rights of the Child. So it's a commemor commemoration which took place on the 20th of November 2019. Now, normally when I interpret Algeria, I find it very difficult. In fact, the last five times I've interpreted Algeria, uh, every single time the speaker spoke at a rate of over 180 words per minute. Now, I don't know if you know what a reasonable uh, delivery is in interpreting, but uh, we consider that between 100 and 130 words per minute is reasonable. Anything above that is much more difficult to um, cope with. Um, the last time I interpreted Algeria was on the 7th uh, of October last year, and they spoke at 191 words per minute the time before that was two days before, 194 words per minute. Uh, before that was September, 184 words per minute. Uh, March last year, or two years ago rather, 184 words per minute. And uh, the time before that was 225 words per minute. Now, the good thing for Erin is that uh, Algeria speaking on the 20th of November 2019 in New York spoke at 134 words per minute, which is a lot more reasonable. Um, the speech wasn't very technical, which helps uh, as well. This isn't to take away anything from Erin, who did a very good job, um, very enjoyable listening to her. Um, but it's just to say that uh, no normally Algeria is um, very difficult to, to cope with, not to mention the fact that um, very often the subject of Algeria's uh, speeches uh, is a dispute with Morocco about um, a non-self-governing territory
called Western Sahara, which you should, if you're interested, if you want to be prepared for such speeches, you should uh, look into, especially the um, camp called Tinduf. Right, uh, I from the outset, I'd like to say that I am a no match for Roland's wizardry with uh, technology. I have uh, not been able, been able to practice for hours on putting words up on a screen, so you're going to have to bear with me, and I hope that it it um, is accessible to you. So here goes. Uh, listening to Erin, you will have the text uh, with the link, I believe, um, on YouTube. Um, I will play Erin and stop her whenever we uh, need to make any comments. So here goes. Thank you, President. The commemoration of the 30th anniversary of the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child is indeed a very special moment, as the present and the future are being built around children. Le présent et l'avenir se construisent autour des enfants, Erin rendered as, as the present and the future are being built around children. Now, we start off with a something that's not entirely positive. Um, this is almost, I would say, uh, accurate, but I believe that the speaker is talking about um, a fact of life rather than a single event. So instead of the present continuous, uh, I would use a simple present. So I would have said here, as the present and the future are built around children in general, and not just this generation of children. Children. This commemoration is also held with the participation of children and young adolescents, and I welcome their presence. This event Notice how Erin uh, stops the sentence there uh, and chooses to restart a sentence instead of saying uh, literally, dont je salue la présence, whose presence I salute or pay tribute to or welcome or note. Um, she actually stops and starts again, starts again, and I liked that way of coping uh, with that. This event is a rather timely opportunity to recall the commitments made three decades ago. Cet événement est un, une occasion propice au rappel des engagements pris. This event is a rather timely opportunity to recall the commitments made. I like that as well. Uh, for occasion propice, timely opportunity. Uh, alternatives uh, could have been appropriate, fitting, rightful, suitable. It's always good to have as Roland often says, uh, alternatives up your sleeve. I call them um, semantic fields. I have a whole list of them, and uh, those are my uh, four alternatives. Usually I have five, uh, but that those four alternatives I think would work. Decades ago. Name me to Now you might have noticed there was a fairly long pause there. And I believe it's because Erin was uh, aware that she was um, quite ahead of herself or the speaker was fairly slow. Uh, but four to five seconds, that's quite a long, quite a long pause. I would uh, I would try myself to um, either fill in the gap or slow myself down uh, to really keep pace with the speaker rather than um, getting slightly ahead and then pausing and uh, because listeners uh, I believe uh, worry quite fast so four or five seconds I think that will be that that is quite long Name me to ensure children's full enjoyment of their fundamental rights in a binding non-negotiable way so we have Pour assurer de manière obligatoire et non négociable la pleine jouissance par tous les enfants de leurs droits fondamentaux, to ensure children's full enjoyment of their fundamental rights in a binding and non-negotiable way. That works. That is okay. I, every time I say 
in a in a something way, um, I'm I'm unhappy with my own performance. So I wondered what I would have said instead. And I think to get round uh, the use of in a binding and non-negotiable way, you could say to ensure children's full statutory and unconditional enjoyment of their fundamental rights, then that way you don't have the um, expression in a non-binding and non-negotiable way. Um, my alternatives for binding or mandatory, compulsory, uh, obligatory are the, just those <laughs> compelling, compulsory, mandatory, obligatory. And uh, of course, non-negotiable wor works, um, but I think unconditional, unconditional would sit better there. Way. Beyond the consideration of our commitments, this commemoration. So, l'évaluation de nos engagements. L'évaluation de nos engagements, consideration of our commitments. That's, that, that does work as well. Um, but I think the speaker also has in mind here um, them taking stock, um, having a, some kind of a, a review. Okay, it's been 30 years. How well have we done? So let us evaluate our commitments. Let's see how well we've done. So uh, consideration of our uh, commitments would work. Um, maybe something along the lines of review our record. Uh, assess our performance would uh, be uh, a good alternative also. Commemoration also enables us to underscore the pressing need to, con to keep up efforts to promote and protect. So, nous offre également l'opportunité de souligner l'impérieuse nécessité. That was nice, the way Erin rendered impérieuse nécessité as pressing need. And protect the rights of all children to live, to develop, to learn, to flourish, and to make their voices heard. In short, to ensure the scrupulous respect of the principle of the best interest of the child. Okay. Principe de l'intérêt supérieur de l'enfant. As you heard, Aaron rendered that as the best interest of the child. Now, that is a technical term and you could not use anything else. That is a principle which is enshrined, uh, regularly referred to by many different committees and uh, by definition by the Committee on the Rights of the Child. So very important that you get that uh, right every single time. It's not the higher uh, or superior interest of the child, it's the best interest of the child. Mr. President, since the restoration of its national sovereignty, Le recouvrement de sa souveraineté nationale, restoration of its national sovereignty, very good. He basically, I assume, means independence since uh, we uh, got uh, the reins of our own um, independence back. In other words, six, 1962, I believe, when uh, France uh, left its former colony. Sovereignty. Algeria has placed children at the heart of its national policies and programs to guarantee and promote their rights. So, the uh, politics and the programs national visant to guarantee and promouvoir their rights. Now, I like the fact that Aaron didn't go for the literal aiming to guarantee, but rather says, just said to guarantee. Now, that often happens uh, in French and in Spanish. Additional words we don't really need in English, and I'm I'm I have got a long way to go to get that right because I I tend to be so conditioned by the original. I will repeat what they have said. So Erin didn't. She didn't say um, uh, aiming to guarantee. She said to guarantee, which was a lot better. So well done. Rights at both the legislative and regulatory level. Au plan législatif et réglementaire at the legislative and regulatory level. That's very good. Um, just, just to point out, the phrase cadre législatif et réglementaire comes up again and again and again. So it's very good to, to have that as a, an absolute reflex in your mind 
Every time you hear that, you just spit out legislative and regulatory framework. The Capella results achieved in this respect bear witness to the continued efforts of my country. Les résultats probants enregistrés, I like the compelling results achieved. Uh, that did not come naturally to me to say compelling, but it is uh, very good. I like it. And next was... Uh, témoigne des efforts soutenus, consentis par mon pays. Now, um, I like the bear witness too. Um, there are a few alternatives you could go for to, uh, to express that same idea. I love to say attest to. You can also say illustrate or reflect or signal. So alternatives for to bear witness, témoigner, attest to, illustrate, reflect, signal. Also made plain in our voluntary national report presented in July 2019 to the ECOSOC High Level Political Forum on the... I just realised I... I uh, failed to point out something else which I liked um, when the original said effort soutenu consenti par mon pays. Evan said continued efforts of my country. She didn't go agreed by my con country. Consenti would have been agreed by my country. But once again, that's uh, additional words you don't really need in English. So continued efforts of my country is much better. implementation of the 2030 agenda. Okay. Uh, illustré also. Illustré à travers le rapport national. Also made plain in our voluntary national report. I like that. was good. Now, la mise en oeuvre du programme 2030. I systematically get that one wrong myself. I tend to repeat the 2030 program, but it is absolutely correctly, as Aaron said, it is the implementation of the 2030 agenda. So, Programme 2030, 2030 Agenda, Development Agenda for the SDGs. Thus, the principle of compulsory and free education without any gender discrimination. So, discrimination entre les filles, oh, sorry, no, rather going back. Le principe d'obligation et de gratuité de l'enseignement. As I was saying earlier on, I am so conditioned by the original, I, I have to really step back and not imitate the structure of the original. And here, uh, the French uses um, two nouns, obligation and gratuité, and Aaron goes for adjectives in English, which works a lot better. The principle of compulsory and free education. So nice switch uh, from nouns to adjectives. Of course, discrimination entre filles et garçons is gender discrimination. The French always goes for the longer version. Uh, it's good to, to have that reflex in English that you don't have to say discrimination between boys and girls. It's just gender. So if they were adults, it would have been discrimination entre les hommes et les femmes. Uh, same thing, gender discrimination for us in English. Led to a school enrollment rate of 98.5% in 2018. Taux de scolarisation, very good. School enrollment rate. Um, it's also good to have at your fingertips the following. Le taux d'abandon scolaire, which is the school dropout rate. And something that I always forget, absenteeism, which can just be translated or interpreted as absenteeism uh, in English or even truancy. So it's good to have those constantly in your mind because otherwise... In the heat of the moment, if the speech is difficult or fast, you won't be able to find them fast enough. So, school dropout rate, absenteeism, truancy, school enrollment rate. Similar headway has been made in... Des acquis similaires ont été enregistrés. I like headway. I wouldn't have gone for that. So, that's a very good solution for acquis. Acquis is basically your, your achievements, what you have succeeded in doing. Um... That headway is good. I like it. In terms of healthcare. Indeed, thanks to free access to healthcare and vaccinations in Algeria, a widespread vaccination programme. So the uh, programme élargi de vaccination, widespread vaccination programme, that works well. 
Um, perhaps the speaker wanted to labour the fact that the programme had been, it wasn't just widespread, it had been made even larger. So perhaps expanded or extended uh, would have worked there. Programme, considered by UNICEF to be one of the most effective healthcare programmes, has led to a reduction in the infant mortality rate from 4% in 2000 to 2.3% in 2018. So we have performant, first of all, l'un des programmes de santé les plus performants. Performant, which Aaron rendered as effective, that's very good. Taux de mortalité infantile, infant mortality rate, that's not particularly difficult, but it, um, it's good to, to, to have that, uh, once again, uh, not, ha not have to think about it. Recently, I came across two uh, similar acronyms. Well, the acronym for infant mortality uh, rate, IMR, but I also uh, heard IMR, IMR mentioned in connection with MMR. That's not the vaccination, the mumps, measles and rubella, but it's the maternal mortality rate. So IMR and MMR, infant mortality rate, maternal mortality rate. The Algerian government also adopted a law in July 2015 guaranteeing the protection of children against all forms of prejudice, neglect, violence, ill-treatment and exploitation. OK, une loi qui consacre, consacre la garantie de la protection de l'enfant contre toute forme de préjudice. Uh, Aaron went for prejudice, which in English works no problem. Um, my hesitation in going for prejudice would be due to the fact in, in English, prejudice can mean two things. Uh, it can mean harm or it can also mean having prejudice about someone. So. Whenever somebody says in French préjudice, I tend to go away from the, uh, the direct calc, which would work, and I tend to say harm, just in case my listeners uh, are confused and are left wondering whether I meant um, the prejudice, which is harm harmful, or the prejudice, which is you having uh, prejudicial views about people. So I tend to go for um, harm or all forms of harmful practices. So there I would have said possibly, instead of law guaranteeing the protection of children against all forms of prejudice, I would have said the law embodying guaranteed protection for children against all harm or against all forms of harmful practices. Exploitation and aiming to protect their rights in emergency situations. Now here, when the French says visa protéger ses droits, um, Aaron said aiming to protect their rights. Uh, now, earlier on, when it said visant à garantir or vise à protéger, visa à garantir, Aaron ignored the aiming and went for just the to. Here you couldn't just say to because it was part of a sentence. Um, I, would, I wouldn't have said myself... Um, aiming to protect their rights, although it works. Uh, I always prefer when we talk about laws to speak about designed to protect their rights. So instead of uh, aiming to protect their rights, designed to protect their, to protect their rights, uh, their rights. I think that um, sounds a little better in English, although aiming worked fine. ...natural disasters, war and armed conflict. The law also protects them from the media, preventing any attacks on their mental or physical well-being. Okay, very good here. Uh, the French, just uh, following on from the beginning of the, th of the sentence, which says, um, vise à protéger ses droits, uh, dans les situations de ainsi que face aux médias. Now, Aaron started the, the sentence again to remind the listeners of what the beginning of the sentence was. So that was a good, useful addition of the law also protects them from the media. Now for équilibre physique et mental, Aaron said mental or physical well-being, which is very good, but that triggered a thought with me. And that is, uh, and I'm sharing it with you because it is something that you uh, should always uh, bear in, have in mind because it can come up elsewhere. The World Health Organization speaks of this concept, which is the highest attainable standard of mental and physical health. 
Now, when you hear that in the French, namely, meilleur état de santé physique et mentale susceptible d'être atteint, or atteint, if you want me to, to use a standard Parisian accent and another southern, southern French accent, then you might not necessarily come up with the highest attainable standard of mental and physical health. But if you practice it, um, you're much more likely to get it right the first time. So, meilleur état de santé physique et mentale susceptible d'être atteint, the highest attainable standard of mental and physical health. For well-being. The efforts undertaken by my country in this field fully reflect its commitment to honouring its international obligations under the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child. So, two things here. Reflète pleinement son attachement à honorer ses engagements. Now, Erin did well not to repeat uh, commitments here because my natural inclination would have been to say uh, fully reflect their um, commitment to honour its commitments. Um, I don't know if she thought about this carefully so as not to make the repetition, but whatever her reasoning was, well done. Uh, she said commitment and obligations. So, well done on, on avoiding that uh, pitfall. Um, and then, découlant de la Convention des Nations Unies sur, sur les droits de l'enfant, very good, under the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, and it's all good to have alternatives for under, and I have a few for you here. You could say pursuant to, you could say as provided in, proceeding from, or stemming from. So that's my semantic field for découlant, under. But also in terms of implementing the 2030 Agenda and the SDGs. Ms. OK. Dans le cadre de, a lot of people learn cadre as framework and they put framework everywhere. I, I When I learned French, um, dans le cadre was always in the context of. I did, it only took me, it took me years to um, put two and two together and to realize that a cadre was actually a frame or uh, framework. So I never used to say framework. Uh, so well done, Aaron, on um, saying in terms of instead of just going for the in the framework of. Mr. President, the 30th anniversary of the adoption of the CRC. OK, they're very good. Uh, do that as much as you can. Whenever you can put an acronym in there, you save yourself time. Uh, obviously, as long as your listeners will know what the acronym stands for. Most of the time they do in this particular context. So good uh, good to use the acronym whenever you can. It's taking place against a backdrop of a rapidly developing world. I like that. À un moment où, against the backdrop of. A very nice way of uh, rendering uh, that expression in the French. And we're about to come up to, uh, to another pause. And I'll see if I can... Um, play it to you in such a way that the pause is obvious this time around. It might not have been last time. Sorry about that. Where the rights set forth in the convention face new challenges. Namely, due to the development of new... There again, three to four second pause, a little too long, I would say. Um, just to ensure that your listeners don't get too worried when you pause and think, oh, there's a technical problem, um, I can't hear the interpretation anymore. Try and either um, slow down, fill the gap. Uh, um, the original said, les droits énoncés dans cette convention. Very good. Aaron said, rights set forth in this convention. Uh, a, a few alternatives could be um, embodied, enshrined, listed, or proclaimed. If you want some more elements in that semantic field of mine. So for set forth, so for enoncé, set forth, embodied, enshrined, listed, proclaimed in. Climate change, disproportionate development and migration. Disparité de développement, I like it, Disproport, disproportionate development, I, that wouldn't have come naturally to me. These changes call on us then to further join forces and... Conjuguer davantage, no, davantage nos efforts, further join forces, that works very well, thank you. And act collectively to combat the modern challenges that increasingly endanger our children. 
It is only through a comprehensive, inclusive approach. Dans le cadre d'une approche globale, inclusive, very good on not just repeating global, because when the French say a global, they normally mean uh, comprehensive. Uh, in this day and age, with uh, languages influencing each other or English influencing uh, other languages so much, um, f the French have uh, started to say uh, global when they mean mondial. So when we say global, we, me, we mean uh, we can mean either general or um, planetary. Uh, now, the French, in theory, should never mean planetary when they say global, but so they should say mondial for, for they should say mondial when they uh, are wanting to say a global but increasingly they've, they've been saying uh, global instead of mondial but in this particular case oh, it's good for us to keep in the habit of when we hear global we say comprehensive rather than global although sometimes it can be global it depends on the context the approach that respects the unique culture of each nation that we will be okay unique culture of each nation the original was um, les spécificités culturelles de chaque nation unique culture that's that works very well uh, it's just one of my uh, semantic fields as well because it tends to come up a lot uh, alternatives to um, spécificité uh, distinctive features hallmarks special characteristics or even specificities, but you might not like specificities because it sounds a little too much like the French. So distinctive features, hallmarks, special characteristics, or specificities. specificities. That we will be in a position to create the conditions for a better world for our children and for our citizens of the future. Nos citoyens en devenir, our citizens of the future. That works. Um, perhaps there's a subtlety of meaning there that in there that the speaker wanted to include, or his speech make, makers at that uh, at that rate. Um, you could say aspiring citizens or our citizens in the making, uh, given that we're talking about children, they're in the making, citizens in the making, or they're aspiring citizens, they're not yet citizens, they're aspiring citizens. Finally, I should note that my delegation aligns itself with the statement made by Tunisia on behalf of the African group. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I interrupted you there. Uh, indeed, uh, souscrit à uh, aligns itself with, uh, endorses, echoes, adds its voice to. Uh, there are quite a few alternatives uh, to that as well. That brings us to the end of uh, this analysis. Sorry for the fault, faltering style and the various uh, uh, technical hitches which you might have noticed. I hope you didn't. Um, wasn't as smooth as, as I had hoped. Not as easy as I thought it was, Roland. So uh, congratulations, Roland, for um, how much you have done so far on this uh, Interpretation Station YouTube channel. Very enjoyable. Um, I know it's uh, very useful to, to people. I hope this will be um, another little brick in your the edifice that you are building and it will be helpful to your subscribers. So thank you, Roland, um, and uh, good luck, everybody, with your practice. Bye. Episode 31 of the Interpretation Station. Now stands adjourned. <laughs>